Hey family, okay, we're back. Uh, shout out to those of you who were with me five minutes ago. Turned out that my Wi-Fi wasn't on, that's why I had a poor connection, but we are back now. And today I'm doing free readings, so I'm gonna let the room fill up because I know that whenever I do these, you guys are always complaining that you didn't have time to load the room. Um, for those who joined me five minutes ago or those who didn't join me five minutes ago, what I was saying before we got cut off was that the first half of this session, hi everybody, hi Heather, hi Kia, hi Olivia. The first half of this is gonna be me doing my weekly free game. Let me make sure that I put this in the chat. Hold on, let's see if it lets me paste. Register to join blue summer 24eventbritecom send. All right, I'm gonna pin this comment. For those of you who want to join us, the On Thy Shift Self Mastery course kicks off next Wednesday, next week, I know. It's crazy how fast that happened. But I had such a great June that when I woke up this morning and I decided to do this uh, installment of Free Game, something was like, Blue, talk about what you've learned in, from January to May that made you have such a good June. The reason why June was so good was because of the way that I approached January, February, March, April, and May. So I'm gonna go over this very quickly, no more than 20 minutes, hopefully, maybe even less than that. And when I, once I'm done doing this, then I will pull out the cards. I know you guys get excited when I do this. Then I will pull out the cards and we're gonna do some free game. I'm not, not free game, some free readings, okay? All right, so the biggest lesson that I've learned from the first half of 2024, and guys, I hate when y'all do this, stop writing on June 1st that we're halfway through the year. June 1st is not halfway through the year, guys. July 1st is halfway through the year. It's like one of my biggest pet peeves. The end of June going into July is the halfway point. So now that we're officially 50% into the way of uh, how we are existing through 2024, I wanna give you guys a heads up about what I've been, has it been a secret? I don't think it's been secretive. But what I've been doing for the past six months that has made me so happy. I, I said this earlier on the live before my connection got cut off. June 2024 was hands down the best year that I've had in five years. And there's a reason for that. On January 1st, and I remember I, I did a live with you guys just like this, dressed all in white, just like this. I've been wearing a lot of white lately. People who know about spirituality understand why wearing white is really helpful. But um, on the first day of the year, I had a conversation with myself after that live. And I said, Blue, you're in a really powerful space right now where you have never been more equipped to give your all. So for the first half of this year, you have to give everybody the best of you. Listen to that, guys. I made a commitment on January 1st that I was going to give all my relationships the best of me. My professional relationships, anybody that I was doing business with, anybody that commissioned me to do work, anybody who wanted to collab with me, they were going to get my best. I was not going to use stress, money, family. I wasn't going to use anything as an excuse to give anything other than my best. And if I didn't have my best to give, I would say no thank you. That was my rule for myself for the first half of the year. If someone asked something of me and I couldn't give my best, I wouldn't do it at all. Personal relationships. My friends. I'm not great at like checking on people or calling on people because I have ADHD and I just my brain just be getting scattered. I was super intentional about even when I was super busy having these key touch points with my friends. My friends within reason got the best of me. When I was overwhelmed or tired, rather than making an excuse, I would express that, hey friend, I don't have it right now. Can we talk this weekend? So my communication skills, I was super intentional. And then romantically, every single person who I dated the first half of this year, I made it a point that whenever we were having a romantic encounter, that I was fully present, that I didn't have any trust issues, that I didn't play any games, that I was transparent, and that I was honest and vulnerable. I dated for the first half of 2024 as if my heart had never been broken. So that was my mantra to myself. And what's interesting is, towards the end of May, I had a conversation with self again, checking in, and I realized two things. First thing was, I pulled it off. Every single relationship I had by the end of May, and if I'm lying, may I be struck dead by lightning right now. Every relationship that I had by the end of May of this year, I could honestly look them and God in, their, in the face and say, I gave my best. I did not play games. I did not cut corners. I did not bullshit. I did not lie. I didn't have any trauma responses. I gave them the best of me. So the first thing I realized was, God, I'm so proud of myself because I set out to do this thing. I set out to be me with the volume turned all the way up and I did it. The second thing I recognized was 
I was fucking tired. Can we talk about it, guys? I was fucking tired. So today, the conversation that we're going to have for free game is going to be, what happens when you did your part, but they didn't do theirs? A lot of times when we come on here, I chin check myself and y'all by talking about all the ways that we fail ourselves. But I also don't want to get into the habit about doing content that assumes failure, about doing content that assumes brokenness. Because there are times where we actually do pull it off. We actually do understand the fucking assignment, right? There are times where you actually showed up in a way that you're really fucking proud of and shit still didn't pan out. In those moments, you have to realize this is not intrapersonal, it's interpersonal. So let's get into it, right? Whenever somebody takes my workshop, and this is not a plug, but it kind of is. Whenever somebody takes my workshop, it's eight sessions, right? The first four sessions are all about self because my belief is, and the belief of anybody who is worth their weight and salt in this work is, you can't tell shit to nobody else until you tell it to yourself first. That's why whenever I meet somebody who wants to chin check me and be like, Blue, do you know what your problem is? My first part, my first thought is, do you know what your problem is? Because if you can't tell me shit about you, then you definitely can't tell me shit about me. People who like to pontificate and externally point a finger, but never turn that finger inward, can't tell me shit about nothing ever. If you have no self-awareness, I actually am disinterested in your opinions on me because it is fruit from the poison tree. Now, people are like, well, Blue, don't you always say a broken clock is right twice a day and, you know, two things can be true at once? Sure, a lot of things can be true at once. All those things are not, are not any of my business, though. Because here's the thing. Just because someone is, has a valid point doesn't mean the water is clean. Just because somebody has a valid point doesn't mean their intentions are clean. If two people are sharing an insight with me, identical insights, and one person has a pure heart and one person has an agenda, they don't feel the same. Valid feedback from compromised sources are compromised feedback. Because that person, even if they have the best of intentions, because they lack self-awareness, because they are in denial about whatever hidden resentments they might have, subconsciously, they're going to slip in some bullshit with the medicine. I don't like to ingest bullshit. So I don't care how valid your points are. If you are unsafe, I'm not going to take a hit directly from you. I might listen to you with a guard up, a reasonable guard up, and then process it on my own and or with somebody who I care about who is safe. A lot of you have to recognize, this is something we say a lot in journalism, consider the source. Have you ever had a conversation where you and your homegirl or you and your homie agree on something? And you both know that you peep the same bullshit. And so you start saying about what, what you think about it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they completely agree with you. And then they start saying what they think about it. And halfway through, shit goes left. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I agree with most of what you said, but that little part in the corner was funky. What the fuck was that? It happens all the time where you agree with someone until they keep talking. The broad strokes, the broad strokes might be valid. But I promise you, the bullshit, the resentment, the deflection, the manipulation is in those smaller strokes. It's in those nuances. So as someone who values nuance, I don't want nuance feedback from someone who lacks self-awareness. Because the nuance feedback, God is in the details. A lot of times when we get really bad advice from friends and family, it's because they made sense in the broad strokes, but they were full of shit and the nuances, right? So rather than play that game of what is real and what is bullshit, bruh, just count me out. I'll hear it from someone else. And so at the end of May, I was like, damn, I'm proud of myself, but I am exhausted. This is not intrapersonal. This is not about my relationship with self. By the way, in case I'm not enunciating, guys, intrapersonal is I-N-T-R-A, conversation, relationship with self. Interpersonal is I-N-T-E-R, interpersonal conversation between me and someone else so at the end of this the month of may i realized that my interpersonal conversations were great i was doing so well and so proud of how i navigated some really icky conversations and situations but my interpersonal i was like some of y'all who got my best didn't deserve it and that is where discernment comes up now you guys know i like to take notes Hold on, i'm gonna make sure i hit all my notes oh shout out to mike 
Um, shout out to Trick. I love that you guys are in here. Shout out to Renee and Haley. So, once you find out that the interpersonal is the issue, it's not you. Because I always check in with myself first. Whenever something goes left, the first person I point a finger at is me. I was like, no, I actually am obsessed with how well I handled this shit. And I'm not saying that to be conceited, okay? I am a triple Virgo. If I'm full of shit, my neuroses will scream at me. If you watch Inside Out 1 or 2, you know how neuroses works, okay? So I was like, no, it, it wasn't me, actually. I really loved everything that I did, and I would do it again. So now that I know it's not me and it's them, yikes, what is the issue? Here's the first thing I want to say, guys. A lot of times when we give our best and we don't get the best back from others, it's easy to play victim, and I do not believe in playing victim. One thing that you have to realize is we always talk about sore losers. We ra rarely talk about sore winners. What is a sore winner? A sore winner is someone who is steeped, steeped in a lack mindset. They're convinced they're never going to be loved. They're convinced that because their mama, their daddy, their uncle, their matriarch, their, their guardian, someone failed them repeatedly in their formative years and their young adulthood. And so they are steeped in lack and convinced that life will always disappoint them. They are walking around with a victim mindset. And so their lens, their default setting is lack. And when life decides to throw them a W, via a healthy person who is going to be transparent and kind and loving and hold space for them. Someone who's a sore winner cannot accept that they're winning. They cannot accept that they're having a honest, transparent interaction. They cannot accept that they are safe. They cannot accept that that blessing that they prayed on half, half asked actually came true, right? People show up to each other's lives as blessings a lot of times. Shout out to Ricky Smiley, who one time when I interviewed him, he said to me, I was like, Ricky, why did you buy a car from a random boy from your neighborhood? And he said, Blue, it's a blessing to be a blessing. Anybody from the South knows our grandmas be telling us that it's a blessing to be a blessing. And so a lot of times your blessings don't show up via you getting a direct deposit or you winning a lottery or you getting a raise. A lot of times a blessing comes via the people who have been introduced into your life to help you elevate. And so when I made that promise on January 1st, to give my best to every single person I come in contact with, myself included, because I'm a person too. In that moment, I was committing to being a blessing. And not in a self-aggrandizing way, like, oh, I'm a blessing, you better kiss my feet. But like, yo, no, it's a blessing to be a blessing. I am going to walk through the world as if I love being of service and that I love that I'm operating from an abundance that allows me to be of service without depleting myself. However, there were two groups of people who sh actually, no, there was three groups of people who showed up. The first group was the grateful group. People who were like, Blue, I've known you for years. I'm so happy we finally got a, ch a chance to hang out. I thought you'd be too busy. Thank you for agreeing to have dinner with me. Or, oh, wow, this was a great conversation. Why did it take so long for us to connect? There was that group, the grateful group. Y'all are my fucking faves. Someone said, yes, as a Birmingham native, Ricky does that often. Yes, Ricky Smiley is a very loving person. Someone else said, you're calling me out for hyper-focusing on random unkind feedback from someone who I know I shouldn't take seriously as they've made their mind up about me. Exactly. So people who are sore winners, right? Fuck sore losers. Sore winners, their default setting is lost. So when they meet somebody who's abundant and trying to show up as a blessing and be a win for them, they don't know how to receive that. I love that first group. Everybody who showed up to receive the love with which I showed up to them, they've gotten more of me, right? I want to incentivize good behavior. So that first group was the grateful. The grateful folks, the loving folks, the affirming folks who received and gave back have gotten more of me. And you guys see them all the time. Have you not noticed that I'm constantly hanging out with Bridget? Have you not noticed that I'm constantly hanging out with Mike? The people who you see constantly in my vicinity are the folks who I received were grateful and gave me something to be grateful about in return. That was the first group. The second group was the folks who were cautiously optimistic. The folks who were like, it's blue full of shit. She can't possibly be this nice. I usually think of loud black women as being a mess, but this bitch seemed like she's loud and fun, but still safe. Is that really a thing? And they leaned in. And over time, the consistency of my character showed to them that I was exactly who I said I was. Shout out to the cautiously optimistic group because I totally fucking get it. When you're steeped in lack, it takes a lot of courage to say, yo, for 30 years, for 32 years, 33, 34, 35 years, everybody I've met has failed me, but I'm meeting someone who is making me feel like there might be hope. Let's see if that hope is valid. I love the cautiously optimistic group. 
I appreciate that you vetted me and over time saw that I really was who I said I was. Because the weight of that, the intentionality of that, there's a beauty in that that I deeply admire. Then there was the ungratefuls. The ungratefuls were people who, because they are committed to and the entirety of their personality is built on cynicism. Because every nasty fucked up thing they've ever done is steeped on the premise that life sucks and so they get to suck as well. Those people freaked the fuck out around me. Because here's the thing, guys. If you have justified being selfish, reckless, inconsider inconsiderate, having no follow through, being noncommittal, wasting people's time, having no integrity, being sneaky, being deceitful, and never taking accountability for your actions, the only way someone who is not a sociopath can stomach that behavior is if they convince themselves that it's the only way. People who are not sociopaths, who think that cynicism is a badge of honor, only do so because they've convinced themselves and they've justified it by saying, this is the only way to survive and prosper in life. It's a dog eat dog world. The world is nasty, the world is ugly, and so I gotta be even uglier to survive it and win. When someone like that meets an abundant bitch like me, who was doing the opposite and still showing up in the same rooms as them, they are at a crossroads. Because the choice is either you admit that you got it fucking wrong and that there's a kinder, more compassionate, safer way to show up in the world and still get ahead, or I'm gonna work really hard on proving this bitch is a fraud. The ungratefuls were the ones who leaned towards the latter. There are people who I met this year who rather than experiencing me in order to realize that I was sincerely who I was, instead tried to study me, to chip away at my armor to prove that I was a fraud. Because if you prove that I'm a fraud, then you don't have an incentive to ever improve or change. The reason why I'm sharing this, guys, is because I need you guys to know that when you meet someone who is determined to misunderstand you, when you meet someone who is determined to think and act and speak as if you are fake during the very moments when you're being your most authentic selves, that is not about you, that is all about them. They are trying to protect their perceived reality. If they admit that you are real, now they have to go back and do the math over again on everything that happened before you. And if they have to do that math, suddenly they have a lot of apologies to make to good people who they were fucky and shitty to. I just said fucky, that's funny. I don't know if that's a word. If you admit that this girl with the big mouth and the big titties who be like, yeah, 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 at all the parties is actually still a good person and is still being invited to all the places that you're being invited to and is still thriving as much as you are, if not more, gag. If someone who is kind and compassionate and takes accountability and doesn't do doggy dog is getting as far, if not further than you. Now, what's your excuse for being an asshole? Now, what's your excuse for being so selfish? Now, all those stories you told yourself about protecting your peace and your autonomy and I get to be like this because I'm my own person, they all sound like bullshit, don't they? People have an incentive to protect their realities when they don't want to grow into something more. A quote that I say all the time is, Anais Nin once said a quote that I think is so brilliant. People don't see the world as it is. They see the world as they are. Someone who is manipulative needs to believe the world is only manipulative. Someone who lies needs to believe that everybody else is lying too. Someone who is lazy needs to believe that hard work is pointless. They need to believe that in order to protect their reality so they don't have to work towards something more. And so I met the gratefuls, I met the cautiously op optimistic, and I met the ungratefuls. And at the end of May, when I was exhausted but proud, exhausted despite being proud of myself, I said, I need to divest from the ungratefuls. Anybody, I'm gonna say something that is gonna sound very counterintuitive from a kind, I'm kind, I'm not nice, I'm kind. There's a difference and those of you who've taken my class know the difference. If a kind, compassionate, emotional intelligence coach is about to say this, it's probably gonna sound funny to you, but, but give me a second. Fuck love, fuck love. And I don't mean real love. I mean the facsimile of love that you guys call love, that I call attachment. A lot of times when you love someone who is ungrateful, 
who is unkind, who's gotten the best of you, but showing up as a sore winner, who's talking shit about you, even though you've done nothing to them, because every time you hold them accountable, they take accountability as a personal attack. In that moment, fuck love. Because that is not love, guys. That's attachment. Love wants you to connect when it is safe. The ego wants you to be attached and think that your love can save somebody. I'm not trying to save nobody but myself. And I realize, bitch, this is not love, it's attachment. The fact that someone could get the best of you, the same best that has the gratefuls loving on you and thanking you, the same best that has the cautiously optimistic saying, you know what, girl, I'm happy that we spent more time together. I really do need to expand the way I look at life. The same best that was feeding two thirds of the population but has now triggered this ungrateful motherfucker. That's not love. That's attachment that has you sticking around. Because if you loved yourself, you wouldn't still be in this room. You guys know I love to quote people. Um, Nina Simone once famously said that I've learned to, to, I've taught myself how to leave the table when love is no longer being served. Anytime that love is no longer being served, I don't give a fuck how attached I am to you. I am getting up and grabbing my things and calling my car service. Right? Because the part of me that loved myself wouldn't stick around for that. The part of me that respected myself wouldn't give you access to keep disrespecting me. The part of me that had dignity would not feel dignified sitting in your presence. Again, guys, intrapersonal versus interpersonal. My intrapersonal skills taught me how to intrapersonally get the fuck out of Dodge when it's time. And y'all know I'm a Taurus. Tauruses are long suffering. We're supposed to be so loyal. Fuck loyalty. I'm loyal to who is loyal to me. I'm good to who is good to me. That turned the other cheek bullshit. I ran out of cheeks, y'all. I ran out. I decided to only invest in people who were investing back. Because to me, if I've been intentionally giving my, my best for five months and you still fixed your mouth to talk to me crazy, you're ungrateful. That's not how you spell thank you. You're ungrateful. I want you guys to get in the habit of, number one, checking yourself and make sure you are giving your best. Because you can't talk with all this bass in your voice unless you've done that first step, right? You can't be an asshole and be like, so-and-so is ungrateful. Are they ungrateful or were you a dickhead to them, right? So the first thing is you actually have to do the, imper the personal work, the intrapersonal work to make sure that you are sincerely, sincerely being intentional and giving your best. And once you've done that, then you can say, you know what? Yeah, what I gave, I paid for more than this. Not to make it sound transactional, but there's a currency of energy that is exchanged when you are giving someone your all. And be mindful, guys. I say this a million times so my OGs can, can quote me by heart. Never set yourself on fire to keep somebody else warm. So when I say your all, I don't mean your all is you dishonored yourself to make somebody better. That is not your all. That is inappropriate. Your all means you gave what you actually had to give and you set healthy boundaries and healthy expectations when you didn't have it. That's what your all means, okay? We don't do martyrs here. We don't do fucking saints. We're all flawed human beings. Are you guys receiving that? We're, we're all doing flawed human beings. So if you gave your all and the person shows up like a donkey, disengage. So at the end of the month of May, I said, you know what, Blue? I'm going to... Give every ungrateful person that I have come in contact with. There was more than one, by the way. There was more than one. Because here's the thing that happens when you talk about universal truth. Niggas take shit personal, right? Because I'm talking about everybody. Everybody thinks I'm only talking about them. There was more than one ungrateful person who had access to me at the end of May. And they always say that giving everybody access to you is very poor spiritual hygiene. I had done a great job giving my best but I was exhibiting poor spiritual hygiene because not everybody in the room had clean feet and clean hands, right? So I was like, okay, there's a list of people who are ungrateful as fuck. I'm showing up bomb as hell and y'all not appreciating it. I'm going to allow everybody the opportunity to have one final conversation with me in May. So everybody who has not heard from me since May, I think you're suddenly realizing why, right? It was intentional, it wasn't, it wasn't by accident. So I had several courageous conversations at the end of May. For those of you who don't know what a courageous conversation is, please look at the pinned comment. Register to join Blue, summer24.eventbrite.com. The workshop starts next Wednesday, and we have an entire class called Courageous Conversations. 
an entire class that teaches you how to have courageous conversations. This is not something that you just trust your gut and feel your way through bullshit. Some of y'all got guts that need to be cleaned up before you can trust them. That's why we have teachers and guides and coaches, right? We teach you how to clean your gut before you can trust it. Not everybody's gut is worth trusting. I can't tell you how many people have come to me trusting their gut and sound like fucking idiots, all right? Clean your gut first. So after I cleansed my gut and had courageous conversations with myself, then I had courageous conversations with others. Again, there was two groups that popped up. Those who, actually no, again, it was three groups. God, it's always three groups. The first group were the people who were unintentionally showing their asses and sincerely appreciated me, but were just going through a lot. And the minute I lovingly chin checked them, were like, oh shit, friend, you're right. I was being selfish. You're right. I was being ungrateful. You're right. I've been asking a lot of you, but not giving it back. Oh my God, I'm so mortified. I didn't mean to do it, but intention doesn't make an impact. And if I've caused you any harm, I'm so sorry, friend. Let's fix it. There was that group. Shout out to that group. I love y'all. The second group was defensive, right? Hella defensive. And then thought about it and said, you know what? You're right, though. I call them cautiously receptive. People who have been defensive their whole life, but can feel that they're in a space where somebody made them feel away, but wasn't necessarily wrong. I appreciate y'all. That second group was actually the most popular group. A lot of folks had bad knee-jerk reactions and then slept on it and called me back 48 hours later like, you know what, Blue? I felt a way about what you said and, not but, and recognize that you said it the kindest or most compassionate way possible. Like, there was no nice way for you to say that shit because it was a very uncomfortable conversation. You never actually attacked me even though I felt attacked. And you gave me grace and had a solution about how we could fix it. By the way, we teach that in the class, guys. When you have a courageous conversation, you can't just walk up to somebody and say, you suck, fix it. That's not how you do that. When you have a courageous conversation, if you're bold enough to call somebody out on their shit, you have to be bold enough to accept how you have co-created that environment, tell them what you would like of them, and then give them an opportunity to respond with new information because you are not God. When you're doing all that math, carry the one by adding them to the equation, right? So I was having conversations where I was telling people their impact on me. I was telling them how I perceived them. And then I was giving them an opportunity to clarify. Some people, when they clarified, told the truth. Some people kept lying. Which brings me to the third group, the willfully ignorant. The willfully ignorant were people who I came to and said, hey, I would like us to show each other compassion. And they laughed in my face. Yes, guys, I had people, actually two people, laugh in my face and double down. When I said, hey, you really hurt me. Could you please show me some more compassion? Now you guys see me. I don't want to cry. And actually, I'm not going to cry. I'm just saying I don't want to cry. So that's why I'm choosing my words carefully. I'm a very bold, audacious, loud, joyous, bright person, right? I had a friend recently tell me that she calls me her darkness repellent. She's like, if there's any darkness in the room, call Blue in because that's just going to run for the hills, right? I take up a lot of energetic real estate. For someone with my big personality to be vulnerable enough to get on a FaceTime, because all these conversations, by the way, happen on FaceTime. I don't do courageous conversations via text. Never, ever, 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 ever do a courageous conversation via text. I don't care if that nigga's in jail, do a conjugal visit, do a FaceTime, something. I don't do anything in writing because 95% of, actually, what happens it 95%? I think it's 93% of communication is nonverbal. So there are things that are being said just by you looking at my face and you feeling my energy that can't come through in writing. And I'm, I'm a writer, so I'm saying this as a writer. So in all those FaceTime conversations, because they were all FaceTimes, the fact that two people saw me and my pride, larger than life self, be vulnerable and brave enough to say, hey friend, you, I'm hurt by your behavior. I'm sincerely fucking hurt by the way you've shown up for me or not shown up for me. Could you please show me some compassion? And in those moments, two people laughed in my face. <laughs> compassion. Here you come with this emotional intelligence bullshit. Pause. Do you guys recognize how disgusting and ugly and unsafe you have to be? Do you guys recognize how much you have to hate yourself to think that that's a reasonable response. Nobody, I don't even, this is a universal truth. 
One of the things we talk about in these free game sessions is there is universal truth and there's personal truth, right? A lot of people who do not like universal truth try to pretend it's personal truth. Whenever I make niggas uncomfortable, the first thing people say is, boo, that's just how you get down. No, no. Several hundred years of therapy, philosophers and pundits and people who have talked about self-mastery said this before my parents even were conceived. Don't make this a personal truth just because you don't like it. Don't be dismissive and say that's blues way. I wish I was that fucking brilliant, but I didn't create this shit. I'm a student, not a teacher, right? And so a lot of times when people don't like that you are showing how inhumane and ugly they are, they take a, per a, a universal truth and they call it personal truth. That's dismissive, guys. So I'm going to say this again. Anytime that somebody that you claim to care about is brave enough to say, you have hurt me, can you please show me more compassion? And your response is to laugh, dismiss, or mock their bravery. You have just shown them how much you hate yourself. Nobody who has even a shred of self-esteem would feel good saying that to someone who cares about them, who's been good to them. And like I said, I made it an intentional point to be good to every fucking body who came across my path for the first five months of the year. So I was like, wow. I even gave a second chance. So wait, are you mocking my feelings because I actually need to be compassionate? And one of them was like, oh shit, my bad, and chin checked. The other one doubled down. Now I wanna ask you guys, what would you do in my situation? I'm going to ask you in the comment section. If you were brave enough to tell somebody that you deeply cared about and or loved that they had hurt you and that you would like them to be more compassionate towards you and they laughed in your face and made fun of you, how would you respond? Someone says, karma has walked into the room. That's hilarious. How would you respond? Now, somebody said blocked. <laughs> I, I didn't block, but that, that, that's a reasonable response. Somebody said, I shut down emotionally and leave the convo. Someone said, leave them where they are. Somebody says shut down. Shut down's a big one. And I completely understand shutting down. Somebody said I would never speak to them again. Walk away. You guys are all saying this. Do you know what I said when this happened? I said bet. I was like bet. Now, here's where things get interesting. One of the people that I said bet to got angry and was like, I thought you were supposed to be an emotional intelligence coach. You don't think you're being passive aggressive? Let me explain something to you guys about clarifying questions. This is something for those of you who have taken my course or who like to take notes during these sessions, please write this down. People only ask questions for two reasons, curiosity or manipulation. I'm gonna repeat it one more time for the folks in the back. People only ask questions for two reasons, curiosity that wants to lead to clarity or manipulation. People only ask questions to get clear or to manipulate. I'm repeating it over and over again. It's not a tip, guys. Redundancy is how people learn. So when someone is bold enough to look you in the face and make it clear that all the goodness, all the love, all the access that you have poured into them is not enough to inspire them to take you seriously when you ask for a basic and reasonable amount of compassion. Are you unclear at that point? What could be clearer? That's why my response was bet, say less. You could not have been any clearer. Had I continued, because some of y'all do this, women especially, because we've been socialized to be people pleasers. People pleasers love to ask disingenuous questions because even though this motherfucker has made it clear, you don't mean shit to me. I hate myself, so I can't respect you and all your goodness, right? Even though that shit is clear, a people pleaser or someone who's self-aggrandizing who thinks that their love can save people. Bullshit. Someone who is delusional about their impact would keep asking questions even though they were clear. The minute you keep asking questions even though you're clear, you are officially trying to manipulate. You're trying to manipulate a different answer. You're trying to manipulate them into changing their mind. You're trying to manipulate them into to feeling bad. You're trying to guilt them into feeling bad about something that they fucking meant. Anytime someone has given you a clear answer and you keep fucking going, you are a manipulator in that moment, even if you justify it with the best of intention. But Blue, I was only asking questions because how could he let go of a blessing? Blue, I was only asking questions because he know he need me. Blue, I was only asking, you're fucking trying to manipulate him out of his no. 
It's still manipulation. I don't care how you slice it. If something is clear and you keep fucking asking questions, you are trying to manipulate a different answer. No is a complete sentence. Okay? So in both scenarios, I said bet. When I said bet, it was not because I was being passive aggressive. I'm aggressive aggressive. Have you fucking met me? It was not me saying bet because I was trying to have the last word or I was pretending to be unbothered. I was very unbothered. I called you saying, hey, you hurt my feelings. I'm bothered as fuck. There was zero pride in that. It was bet because I was honoring the clarity that was in front of me. Even as I was hurting. Do y'all hear that? When someone is clear with you, be honest and brave enough to receive the clarity, even if it breaks your heart or makes no fucking sense. Because the truth is, it does not make sense to be dishonorable, nasty, and ungrateful to someone who's only been good to you. It does not make sense to come at someone nasty when they caught you being a bad guy. It does not make logical sense to be cruel and mean-spirited to someone who's been vulnerable and showed you their heart. None of that is sensical. Cynics love to say that they're logical, they're realistic, they're nihilistic, they're cerebral. And yet their actions are often deeply and objectively illogical. That is the irony of cynicism. It's fear and cowardice pretending to be intellectualism. There's nothing smart or evolved about shitting on someone who was nothing but good to you. So no, I don't have any clarifying questions. Bet. Somebody says, even if it makes no sense, it's the eyes for me. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Did I forget to cover anything? Oh, um... Then someone asked me, well, Blue, how'd you go? Because somebody, I was talking to a friend about this and she was like, Blue, how'd you go from um, that nastiness at the end of May? Because I was lovely, 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 intentional, intentional, intentional. For those who are walking into the room, today's class is about how you deal when you have given your best and people are still full of shit. Because a lot of times we act like if you give your best, then you'll get your best back. Not true. Or Maya Angelou, I love Maya Angelou, but this quote is a lie. You know, when you know better, you do better. Not true. I know a lot of people who know better don't do shit. Maya, I love you, but you got that one wrong. Lots of people know better, especially with the internet, and don't do better, right? So today's live is about how on January 1st of this year, I made a promise to myself that I was going to give my best to everybody who I loved. And at the end of May, I was proud of myself for giving my best, but was stunned by how exhausted I was. And that's when I realized that I had given my best, but I was, in, I was not getting the best back. And so I had courageous conversations where the people who had failed me who I had perceived had failed me, were allowed to course correct. Here's the thing people don't understand, guys. Being emotionally intelligent doesn't mean walking around with a fucking machete waiting to cut people off. There's nothing intelligent about that. That's lazy and cowardly. Cutting people off every time somebody pisses you off is so cowardly. Being emotionally intelligent means that you are able to be honest about what you want and you know how to maneuver yourself to get there. If I honestly love you and fuck with you and think you're somebody who has a beautiful heart, you might have an ugly ego because a lot of y'all need ego depths. But if I think you have a beautiful heart and that we could really make each other happy, whether it's professionally, romantically, or even as just friends, and you start showing your ass, being emotionally intelligent doesn't mean, oop, that nigga made a mistake, I'm gonna cut him off. That lady made a mistake, I'm gonna cut her off. Being emotionally intelligent means, at my core, I love you and want to have community with you. So I'm going to show up in a way that's honest and respectful and give you an opportunity to course correct. And if you don't course correct, then you and God and whatever therapist your copay can afford can discuss that on your own without me. But I'm never gonna cut somebody off who I love. Not somebody that I like. I'm never gonna cut off somebody that I love without giving them an opportunity to course correct. If you've ever met someone who says they've met me and I didn't give them the opportunity to fix it, just call them a liar to their face. They're fucking lying. I give everybody an opportunity to fix it. Because if I love you, I fucking want you to fix it. A lot of times, you guys forget to take the pride out of these conversations. Well, if you can't accept me at my, my, my worst, you can't do it at my best, that's pride. Well, I can't believe he did that, so I guess our relationship is over. That's pride. Anytime you're having a two-person conversation by yourself, that is pride. How dare you speak on someone else's behalf while making a decision that impacts both of you? That is conceited. I never do that. If I love you, not like you, because I'll cut off an acquaintance in a heartbeat. But if I say that I love you and I care about you and I've invested in you and I've respected you at the very fucking least, I owe you an opportunity to speak for yourself. 
every single person who fucked around and found out with me in May was gifted an opportunity to speak for themselves. Some took it, some didn't. And that's how June happened. Because at the end of May, I said, now God, you know you're still working on me. My Mercury's in Aries, so I talk like a goon even when I'm being nice. God is still working on me. But I said, God, every single person who has disappointed me in 2024 has now been gifted an opportunity to fix it. Some did, some didn't. What do I do next? And y'all don't often give people who are spiritual and who are into astrology and the metaphysical credit, but a lot of us talk to God more than y'all do. The, the woo-woo girlies, the astrology girlies, the witchy girlies, we laugh all the time because we talk to God more than some of our Christian friends because we are feeding the God within. How do I feed the God within without talking to the God without? How do I feed the God that lives inside of me without looking around me and also speaking to the God that got me here? So I talk to God all the fucking time, guys. All the fucking time. More than my Christian friends who sometimes judge me. The irony of that is never lost on me. So after that disgusting conversation where I was disrespected left and right, disrespected left and fucking right in a way I didn't deserve but was not unclear about, the clarity was there. I then sat and talked to God. I said, God, I can't believe that someone was willing to dishonor something so beautiful. Because all these connections were beautiful connections. I don't fight for ugly connections. I fight for beautiful connections. I don't do frenemies. I said, God, how do I course correct? Because you told me to do my best and I did. You brought me closer to my friends who have been open to my heart. But to the people who were so damaged and hated themselves so much that my best offended and triggered them. Because we don't talk about this, guys. When you have a pure heart, you are going to trigger those who haven't figured out how to get there yet. And guess what God said? Take your power back. It was like a thunderclap. Take your power back. So for the entire last week of May, 2024, every morning I'd wake up and say my favorite prayer. I say it every morning, thank you. The minute I open my eyes every day, the first thing I say is thank you. Two words, thank you. Two words, two syllables. I say it every fucking morning. Even when I'm having a bad day, even when my endometriosis is kicking my ass, when I open my eyes, the first thing I, sometimes I don't even open my eyes, when I'm aware that I'm awake. Because sometimes, you know, I'm a tourist. I like to lay there with my eyes closed for like an hour before I go to bed. But the minute that I'm aware that I'm awake, I've trained myself to immediately say thank you. Because guess what? I woke up. That's reason enough to say thank you. Because not everybody does. If you woke up this morning, that's a reason to say thank you by itself. So I said thank you. And then I said, I call my power back to me. Every single morning for a week. The mornings where I woke up missing people who I, I had had to cut off out of respect for myself. Because there are people who I love with my entire heart who I will never speak to unless they apologize. And me never speaking to them unless they apologize, that's not pride either. People are like, well, you don't think it's pride? If you believe in God, shouldn't you forgive? You guys, I need you to know something. There's two kinds of forgiveness. Again, if you take the class, the link's at the bottom. We talk about this. There's two kinds of forgiveness. There's internal forgiveness and there's external forgiveness. Internal forgiveness means that I've let go of all the pain that you intentionally or unintentionally brought to my life. I've let go of all the pain, be it real or perceived, because not all pain is real. All pain is felt, but some pain is perceived because we're traumatized and haunted by our past, right? So even if somebody says something nasty to you, there's the, the real pain of what they said to you, but there's also the perceived pain of what they reminded you of, right? In that moment when that person who I love so deeply and cared about so much and showed it through my actions, looked at me and laughed in my face when I asked him for compassion. In real life, he disrespected me and hurt me because of what he said. But in my perception, I'm thinking about my father who also called us, caused a similar pain. There's real pain and there's perceived pain. So internal forgiveness means I am forgiving all the pain that was caused to me intentionally or unintentionally without any input from the other party. I am forgiving you without giving access to you because you haven't earned access without an apology because I need to move on. So I internally forgave everybody immediately and called my power back to me. But here's the thing about external forgiveness. External forgiveness is all fucking about you. External forgiveness means you have to own your shit. And it's not because I'm prideful, it's because study after study, teacher after teacher, shaman after shaman, Philosopher after philosopher, you guys, this is why this is universal truth and not personal truth. You see, you see a pattern? Universal truth is bigger than me. It's bigger than you. 
Every great thinker since the beginning of time has been clear about one thing. If you don't acknowledge history, you are destined to repeat it. I didn't make that shit up. So if you fuck me over and are not brave enough to look me in the face and own that shit, you are destined to repeat it. So the fact that I don't talk to anybody who doesn't apologize to me is not because I'm a tourist and I'm stubborn and I can't let shit go. It's because I've studied history. And I know that if you can't own the shit you did to me in the past, it is destined to pop back up in our future. That's why I never, and I very rarely use absolute, so you know I mean it, I have never in my entire life allowed myself to forgive someone who can't apologize and own how they hurt me. I fucking refuse. I would rather eat a denim jacket covered in cat piss than ever, ever open my heart to someone who can't own their shit. Never. Because at that moment, I'm complicit in my own future demise. At that moment, with all the education that I have the privilege of having access to, I am guaranteeing that you're going to fuck me over again. I can't be complicit in that. So it's not pride. It's not me being a Taurus. It's not me being a stubborn. It's not me not being Christ-like. It's not me not turning another cheek. You guys find all these grandiose virtual signaling ways to incentivize people to dishonor themselves. And I'm not fucking buying it. If someone can't look you in the face and be humble, courageous, and honest enough to say, I fucking hurt you and I'm sorry. Fuck if I meant it or not. Fuck it was intentional or real or perceived. I hurt you and I'm mortified that I caused you harm. And I am sorry and I am going to improve through consistent improved behavior. If you can't look me in the face and say that, I don't want to hear shit else from you. Uninterested. So, from May 21st until the end of May, every morning, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I call my power back to me. Thank you, God. And I call my power back to me. Every morning. I did it every morning that last week of May. I thanked God. I forgave the motherfuckers who were not courageous enough to even ask for forgiveness while still recognizing they didn't earn access to me so they won't be getting it. And I called my power back to me. And when I tell y'all, every day I felt lighter. Every fucking day. I'd wake up like, why do I feel so happy? Like I technically went through some really painful shit. And because I have spirit guides, you guys know I'm spiritual. I'm gonna be doing readings in a second. For those of you who are new to me, Every six months or so, I gift you guys with readings. I did it January 1st. I'm doing it again today at the end of this teaching. But like, I was like, yo, I'm just going to let myself be happy because technically I should be sad. Technically, I should be offended. Technically, I should be insulted. Why do I feel so light? And I realized because I really was calling my power back to me. I was calling my power back. And guys, I shit you not. I woke up on June 1st and I had never felt more beautiful. I woke up on June 1st feeling so alive and I could I was like what the fuck is going on at one point don't laugh at me I was like did I take an edible this morning I was like why do I feel high I literally felt like I had taken a really smooth ass edible and I again I prayed and I heard you earned it your power is back you're whole it only took a week of prayer all those people who hurt me they still hurt me and I was still good now here's one thing I didn't do guys you guys always take notes on the things I tell you to do. Please, for those who are taking notes, write this down. Take notes on what I'm telling you not to do. This is a game changer, particularly for those of you who pride yourself on being intuitive and who are nosy. A lot of you in here who come to me are very intuitive and you're also very nosy, which is why you like me because I'm an internal student. I love knowledge. Not a single person on that list of people who dishonored me did I ever lay eyes on them again. And that also means no Finsta accounts. Y'all love to come on social media and call your power back to you and thank God for all your blessings and block people and unfollow them and do all these things. And yet, what do you do at two o'clock in the morning when you feel sad and you miss them? You create a Finsta account and you stalk their page. I had a best friend for 24 years. I knew this nigga since I was a child, a literal baby, 
I hadn't even got my first fucking period yet when I met this man. Next to my mother, he was my favorite person on the fucking planet. I have never known love like that my entire life. And for almost a quarter of a century, he was the most important man in my life. Every person I dated complained, why does he always come first? And my answer would be because he does. Okay, I say this all the time. I know what it's like to be in a long-term marriage because I love the same man for 24 years, right? And when he did not have the bandwidth to make room for the healed of me that was emerging because I was teaching all these classes, I was doing all this curriculum work, I was doing all this therapy, had moved to LA and was following my dreams, I was prospering, right? When I was struggling, he knew how to be in struggle with me, but he didn't know how to thrive with me. And when he started to show signs of resenting me, for growing apart from him because he wasn't growing with me. The day that he dishonored me and I said, shit, I always said, Nina Simone, learn to leave the table when love is no longer in the room. There's no love in this conversation. The day that I cut him off three years ago, I have never once looked on his Instagram page. Never once. If I can love a man for a quarter of a century and for three years, never look at his page, what do you think I'm doing to niggas who got me fucked up who just met me? The reason why my peace is so absolute is because I've learned to mind my fucking business. If someone is dishonorable and unkind and you do not have children with them, mind your fucking business. Because how do you believe in energy? How do you believe that energy is telepathic and non-verbally transmuted while feeding energy towards someone that you claim to be cutting off? How is that possible? You don't see the lack of sense in that? At the end of May, when I released people who I deeply cared about and who were determined to not honor the love that I had given them, I never once again went to any of their pages. I couldn't tell you shit that's going on in any of their lives. I couldn't, if, if somebody right now busted through my house and put a gun to my head and said, Blue, I know you were lying on that live. Tell me one thing that you've seen in the last month and a half from so-and-so's page. Y'all would have to read a eulogy. Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. The opposite of love is in hate. It's apathy. The reason why peace came to me so quickly was because I minded my fucking business. Now, granted, I'm an energy worker. That was not going in both directions. They all stalked my page. Every single one of them. I was having prophetic dreams. So and so's looking at your page. I'm like, well, that's none of my business. They looked at my page. The bitches that they're dating who know about my existence and are wondering about me looked at their page. Their friends who were there talking shit about me looked at my page. To all of you who are probably watching right now, I know y'all been stalking my page. I don't give a fuck. I'm not code switching for nobody. The beautiful thing about being a realized bitch is there's nothing to hide. So look all you want. But it, I promise you, it only went in one direction. I promise you, it only went in one direction. I can tell you shit that's happening in these people's lives. I cut off them and their ecosystems and kept it fucking pushing. Because again, what do I always say, guys, when it comes to forgiveness? Evolve or stay gone. Evolve or stay gone. Either kill off the ungrateful piece of shit asshole who laughed in my face when I asked for compassion. Either kill off that ugly part of you that justified being disgusting to me so that you and I can now talk about him or her in the past tense and have a shared enemy or leave me the fuck alone and stay gone. But how do you tell somebody to stay gone if you're still peeking through their windows? It's intellectually dishonest. I don't get to come here and say evolve or stay gone while having a Finsta account stalking people's pages. Now, I would be full of shit. I tell you guys all the time, my confidence does not come from getting likes. My confidence doesn't come from you guys telling me I'm pretty, even though I appreciate it because you look at my face is beach out to D. My confidence does not come for that. My confidence comes from late at night when none of y'all are around and my head hits the pillow I really am who the fuck I say I am. There is a pride that I have knowing that if a hidden camera TV show followed me around, they'd be like, oh shit, this is really her. I love the consistency of my character and I safeguard it even when there's nobody around but me to clap for it. That's where my confidence comes from. I like knowing that when me and Brittany did The Toad, you guys who watched Humanize, my podcast on YouTube, me and Brittany Hall, shout out to Brittany, she's still in here. We did a whole episode about how we did the psychedelic called The Toad. It is stronger than fucking ayahuasca. And one of the components of the psychedelic is that it turns off the parts of your brain that where your ego lives. Every lie that you told yourself, it turns that shit off. 
it makes you tap into source, which means if you are full of shit, that is how you find out. For those of you who want to go watch that episode, please go watch Humanized, the last episode with Brittany. And here's the thing that's so crazy. When I did the toad, guess what I kept on saying over and over again? Oh shit, there's no translation. I'm exactly who I said I was. Well, damn. Okay, I'm safe. I'm safe all the fucking time. Oh, to the point where I, I think at one point I started laughing and doing hand dances. Even when you give me one of the world's strongest psychedelics and hypnotize me to the point where I cannot fight for myself and nothing but the truth can come out, I'm still the same person. That's where my confidence comes from. Knowing that I'm that impenetrable, there's nothing that anybody can ever say to take that from me. And the reason I'm sharing this, guys, is I want that for you guys. A lot of times when I come on here, I talk about myself and it's not because I need to talk about how great I am. I need you guys to realize that securely attached adults, securely attached black people, securely attached black men, securely attached people over the age of 35, we actually exist. A lot of you are walking around miserable and spiteful, angry, steeped in all this pain because you are convinced that bitches like me don't exist. That's why I keep showing up for these lives. We do. And people who don't believe in us don't get access to us very long. Because one thing I'm going to always say is value doesn't beg. Neither do blessings. Right? I'm not going to beg you to see me as a blessing when I've consistently shown up as one. I'm not going to beg you to acknowledge the obvious. I'm going to keep showing up because I love you, but I'm never going to fucking beg. And anytime anybody fixes their mouth to, to in any way insinuate that I need to tap dance, I am not Gregory fucking Hines. I'm not tap, tap dancing for no, nobody. There's nobody in this world who is rich enough, powerful enough, fine enough, tall enough, dick big enough, wallet wide enough to substantiate you tap dancing and begging for their approval. Nobody. When I work with folks who are working with me, but I am the person in charge, I make sure they know we're working with each other. I say, can you please own this more? Own this moment, we're co-creating it. Even if there's a hierarchy, we're still co-creating it. Hierarchies are man-made. Co-creational is vibrational, right? Things that are co-created, that's a vibrational thing. There's personal truth again, and there's universal truth. So guy, I hope this was helpful. This was the first free game of July. But for those of you who are like, and I've been getting this a lot, Blue, you were, you were glowing in June. And I'm, I'm still be glowing in July. Look at this. This mug is sitting. Stop playing, right? For those who are like, Blue, you were glowing in June. Oh my God, you were outside in June. Oh my God, you were having so much fun in June. What's gotten into you? I got rid of a lot of ungrateful energy. And I called all my power back to me. And it showed up. That's why I'm glowing. That's why I'm so happy. That's why my edges are flourishing and laid. I called my power back. A lot of you are giving away your power because you are begging to be loved on. And I hope to God that someone who's new to my page or someone who's an OG who just needed to hear it for the 50th time is going to be inspired to starting today. Fuck tomorrow because tomorrow's not promised. Today's the only thing that's real. Don't wait till tomorrow. I don't, I don't beg anything on tomorrow, right? Today, when you get off this live, please say thank you, and I call my power back to me. If you get nothing else, do that. Also, if you do have the inclination, please sign up for the course, because it starts next Wednesday. And the thing that I hate that y'all do, and I'm using hate intentionally, I will do these free game sessions every single week for months and months and months. And the minute I close reg registration, 20 of y'all be like, oh my God, Blue, I was supposed to register, I forgot. Could y'all please respect me enough not to do that? If you were gonna take the course, it starts next Wednesday. Put a reminder. Okay? Do not flood my inbox saying I forgot to join the course when I've been talking about it for two months straight. Please, okay? All right, now that we're done with the free game, now we're going to get to y'all's favorite part of this, um, which is free readings. If you're new to me, my name is Blue Toulousma. I am a writer and emotional intelligence coach. Somebody said, can't wait. I can't wait either, love. I'm a writer. I'm an emotional intelligence coach. I'm a clairsentient and a claircognizant. I'm also a podcaster and an executive producer. So I have a lot of hats. I have a lot of hyphens. When people ask me what I do, I just say writer because it's just easier. But I do a lot of things. Um, shout out to people who have known me throughout my career and all the iterations. And one of the things about me that you need to know is I am what they call an unintentional psychic, which means if I was not a clairsentient and claircognizant, I would, pro would probably not believe in this shit. You know, journalistic integrity means always being a bit of a skeptic, right? 
I'm the kind of person who, when I was younger and figured out that I had a gift, it took me about 10 years to accept it as real. I just thought it was a fluke. Until one day my friend was like, Blue, it's been 10 years of flukes, bitch. You might have a gift. So in the pandemic, I stopped just doing private readings for my friends and family and opened up my calendar to do readings for people who I love um, outside and inside and complete fucking strangers. And here's the thing that's wild, guys. The more I do readings for strangers, the stronger my gift works. Your psychic muscle is a muscle, just like the heart is a muscle, right? So we're always talking about emotional intelligence is like personal training. You're training yourself to have these skills. Being a clairsentient and claircognizant, for those who don't know what those mean, clairsentient means I have a sense of knowing. If I'm sitting around talking to friends and family, particularly if I'm drinking or smoking weed, and they tell me a story, I start to know things that I shouldn't know. For sensing and clear cognizance, it means I know and I feel things that I logically should not know and feel. And a lot of times when my clients come to me, I have a lot of repeat clients, they'll be like, you just quoted my ex verbatim. How the fuck did you know he said that? I'm like, I don't know. I just work here. So when we do these free sessions on live, you guys are allowed to ask me one clear question. I am not God. You cannot ask me what is my life's purpose. You cannot ask me when am I going to meet my soulmate. Those are God questions. I'm a human being who happens to be a vessel. So if you want to ask me uh, about a relationship, if you want to ask me about a dynamic, be as specific as possible so I can give you a quick answer and move on. Okay? So we're opening this up, guys. I haven't done this in a long time. Don't make me regret it. To the oldies and the newbies, does anybody have any questions? I come up my power back to me. I will be adding this to my mornings. I love that. Note to self, definitely a muscle worth making stronger. Not me taking a bath post you coming you onto live blue. I wasn't planning on bathing. Going through a slump, saw you and called how powerful water and thoughtful. Oh, that's great. Could you please um, send me prosperous energy for an upcoming PhD preliminary exam? Thank you. I'm going to send you prosperous energy. Um, I don't know if, you have, if you're anemic because I try not to do anything around health. Um, or um, medical stuff because my lawyer told me to stop doing that shit. But you, your energy feels very low. So I, I don't know if you need B12 or iron supplements or sleep, but I'm picking up that um, you need more rest leading up to this exam. So don't just prioritize studying and preparing. You need rest. Your energy is depleted. I actually got tired just reading your, your question. You guys, by the way, once I say that I'm doing an open reading, my guides kind of sit up like, oh, she's giving me permission to tell, tell her about people's lives. Because I always tell my guides, mind your fucking business. Please don't tell me anything unless I'm unsafe. So the minute somebody gives consent and you guys being on this live as you're giving consent, just be clear that when you ask questions, whatever they tell me, I'm going to share with you. So to the person who asked about their PhD program, you need rest, babe. I'm going to send you good energy, but you need some iron or something. You need rest. Um, how long should I stay in my current job and current city? I'm hearing six months. Don't do anything drastic until Q1 of next year, love. Don't do anything drastic until Q1 of 2025. 2024 is you kind of re-upping on resources. And I'm hearing that the way that you see the world is shifting. And so any decisions you make now would shift anyway. So rather than, um, what's that old saying? Measure twice, cut once. Rather than making a hasty decision now and then having to change your mind in six months when you evolve, don't make anything hasty until the top of next year. Because you're, you're currently going through a bit of an ego death, but we'll talk about that later. Somebody, is my long-term friendship worth maintaining? I feel like we're growing apart. You guys have hidden resentments and agreed upon um, toxic packs that need to be renegotiated. And I'm hearing that one of you doesn't have the bandwidth. So um, you might want to take a friendship break. And then when you both have the energy, see if you have the energy to renegotiate. But I'm hearing that you guys have co-created some really fucked up shit that you're growing out of, but neither of you have explicitly talked about it. Somebody said, is my long-term friendship, I already did that one. I feel stagnated and, and, and tired. What do I need to do to pivot? Um, you need more support. You need a lot more support, babe. I don't know how good you are asking for help, but I'm picking up heavily on you that you don't have a strong enough support system. You can't do it on your own. Next question. Will I know the feeling of being someone's mother? Yes. But I'm feeling that you actually had access to that feeling, but you didn't count it because it wasn't biological. So you might want to expand what your view of motherhood looks like. Yeah, I'm hearing that you have already mothered, but you don't count it because it's not. I'm just going to say this. There's a lot of different ways to be a mother and not all of them are biological. But your spirit guides in particular, this is a, it's not a woman, it's a man. Um, is saying that. Also, get your, um, I hate anything medical because I've been told not to do this, but I, I, this is very loud. Get your um, hormones checked out, babe. I'm picking up a hormone, hormonal imbalance. The young lady who said about the PhD said, oh my God, I am exhausted. Yeah, you, your energy, every time your name pops up, babe, I get tired. You, you need to go lay down. 
Remember that video I posted earlier? I'm about to go lay down. Will I find a job soon after looking for so long? No, babe. You are actually going to probably have to look into getting some outside hardship help. I see a blockage around you and employment. Um, yeah, there's a blockage there. You'd have to do a one-on-one -on -one first to figure that out, but I'm picking up an employment blockage for you. And if you do get a job, it's not going to be something that's long-standing. I'm feeling like a heavy blockage. And it might be because of the kind of jobs you're looking for. I'm not sure you're looking for jobs that you're qualified for. You might just be looking for things just to like out of habit, but something about your search is compromised. What do I need to do to move child forward with school and life choices appear stuck? I'm worried. Can you rephrase that, love? I don't understand the question. Does a career change um, the right path for me? Only after saving money. For you, I'm picking up. You need a, a bigger savings. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to say this. Some of these questions, I'm a very optimistic person. Some of these answers are not very optimistic. Again, when I'm doing readings, it's not blue. I'm a vessel. I just, again, I just work here. Um, I just lost my job. Will I be able to get, get a job soon? By the way, congratulations. I'm hearing congratulations. So I'm not sure about why and how you lost your job, but I, I'm hearing applause. You didn't need to be there. That's awkward. Wherever you were, you didn't need to be. Ooh, that's weird. I'm also hearing um, to... Ooh. There are some things that you learned from that last... So the young lady, who, I think it's Curvy Cookie. So the young lady who just wrote, can you tell me how long you were working at that other place of employment? Because they're saying that your employment history has a lesson that you're not learning about how to pivot. So you might want to examine what went wrong and what went right in that last place of employment or your last couple of employment opportunities. Because I'm hearing that you keep repeating a cycle that they're trying to get you to break, which is why they keep on yanking things out of your hands. You guys, a lot of times when we're repeating a cycle and we won't let go, the universe will yank things out of our hands. I said, I have issues. Go well, a lot of these things are about employment. Let me find out everybody starting off the second half of the year, worry about their money. I get it. Issues going on with my job. What do you see the outcome that one is going to have to be a personal reading, love. That one in particular, I'm being told, is, a, is, is too much of a deep dive. Uh, you put in a time limit on this for 10 minutes? Yeah, thank you for checking with me, guys. Usually when I do that, I get really tired, so I'm only doing this for about 10 more minutes. So please write your questions quickly. Um, will I become more financially responsible, and what is my growth of being open to receiving healthy love? Pick, pick a question, love. Pick one question and ask it with your full chest, because that was two. Will my relationship with my friends and my husband get better? No, you... You mm, you have some assholes in your midst. I don't know if it's your friends or your husband. But I heard that you, sometimes when you think you're depressed, you're really just dealing with some assholes. You got some folks you got to let go, babe. So could your relationship with your friends and your husband get better? Yes, but one of them is an asshole. You have some pruning to do. Um, I'm hearing that you need to have a courageous conversation with one person in particular who doesn't respect you, but makes you feel needed. That was very specific. Somebody, to the person who asked, I think it's Renee, somebody who you're sharing space with and feel sad about your connection with them doesn't respect you but makes you feel needed and you've conflated being needed and that attachment with love and it's not love. There's somebody in your question who does not love you but who's, who you're very attached to. That's a very painful answer. I'm so sorry. Actually, I shouldn't say sorry. It's the truth. But Will the friction between my baby mom and I subside soon? It's affecting the child no, I hear that somebody's going to have to be the bigger person. And I hate that phrase. I hate the bigger person phrase because it's so annoying and it's often unfair. Who has to be the, be the bigger person? You might want to get a mediator. I'm hearing that you're going to need a third party to heal it. So if you um, have the bandwidth and the insurance, because I know, you know, mental health and counseling and mediators cost money. I'm hearing you're going to have to need intervention from a third party. You might also want to find if you can't afford that people in either of your circles who you both trust to be interim in intermediaries but y'all you need your tribe to show up because i'm feeling that one or both of you show your ass to each other in a way that you would not show it in front of your friends and the family so one of you is being a donkey one-on-one -on -one, and you need a third party to keep you honest i can't figure out who it, who it is though i hope that was helpful so oh my throat is starting to close up my guys want me to stop soon fuck oh probably because i have clients tomorrow sorry um, for those who want to do one-on-ones, actually, let me do my, my client page. Go to bluecentricshop.com backslash readings. Um, it's also in my bio for those who want to do readings one-on-one, but I'm literally getting the laryngitis feeling, which only happens when I'm partying too much or my guys want me to, to stop talking. Ooh. 
I'm going to say this real quick before I answer any, I answer any more questions. And I feel myself wanting to cry and it's not about me because I'm actually feeling great today. Somebody watching this live, either in this room or who's going to watch this live, is in a psychologically abusive relationship with someone who they think they're superior to. Let me unpack that. If you're in a relationship where you're the one who's being begged to stay and the other person's constantly crying and begging you not to leave, it's easy to convince yourself that you're superior because you're the one being begged to stay. However, that is a lie. You are being abused psychologically and maybe even financially by someone who is playing victim. Ooh, yeah. And whoever it is, they have, ooh. Whoever it is, they might be into magic because I feel like as I'm saying this, something is trying to close up my throat. Like they're saying, don't tell them, don't tell them. So if you are watching this live, be you in this room or you're watching the replay and you're in a relationship where you're being begged to stay and you have pity towards the person who is begging you to stay, you're actually not in the driver's seat. They are manipulating you while playing possum and they might be doing some magic. Either they're doing magic or it's evil eye where they're just preying on your captivity. Oh, God, that was heavy. Jesus Christ. Um, let's see what other questions. Um, I don't know what to ask. I have so many questions. Then book a session and figure out what you want to ask. I don't know what to say. Oh, wow. I thought I'd give it at least 18 months. And yeah, I'm under the ego death. Can't wait to chat more during the course. Yeah, no, I'm hearing that for you. The next six months, not 18 months, that was too long. The next six months are going to be a really, really, really transitional and powerful upheaval for you. If there's a tarot card that I could think of you love, it's the tower card. The tower card is a tarot card that shows a bunch of people jumping out of a burning building because the, the, the jig is up. You are going through a much quicker ego death than you think, love. Give yourself some credit for that. You don't need the full 18 months. You will be a new person in 18 months, but th these next six months are actually the most important. Will I get a better paying job? Are you applying for a better paying job? Because you guys just told me that you're not really aiming for what you want. So that's awkward. Next question. I have anxiety about moving to a new city next month. Am I making the right decision? Yeah, you need to shake things up. You've been in a rut. However, watch your spending and please prioritize your tribe. You're going to need community. You're being asked to shift to a new place because you need a, a fresh community. No shade, no tea to your current friends and family, but they're not enough. I have a very specific friend I'm thinking of cutting off. Should I? Yes. Yes. I'm hearing a loud yes, and I hate that because I, I, my friends are like my family, but I'm hearing a loud yes. I'm also hearing the person that you're thinking about has been talking a lot of shit about you to mutuals who are embarrassed to tell you. Ooh, that's awkward. Um, fil file for divorce in January 2024. Divorce moving slow, trying to rebuild mentally, spiritually, and financially. Am I going about this correctly? You actually need to go harder in the paint, love. Go harder. You're being a little too kind. You're still being a little bit of a people pleaser. And I'm hearing that there's somebody around you who is trying to guilt you or make you feel guilty about how you're going about it, but they're doing it in a very manipulative way where it's actually about them and not about you. So anybody who's not telling you to go bigger or go harder is not working in your best interest. And I'm also hearing the divorce should have happened a, a while ago. You actually waited longer than you needed to for this divorce. So I'm hearing, I don't know how long you were married. I'm hearing at least a year longer than you were supposed to. They're saying it's more than a year. How long were you married? Jesus. You're, okay. The person who's asking about the divorce, your guys do not like your partner. Your guides, G-U-I-D-E-S, do not like your partner. And I'm hearing that they were trying to get you to break up with this person or leave this person for quite a while. And they are annoyed it's taking you so long. And they think that how, even how you're going about it, they want you to go a little bit harder in the paint. Yikes, that was very specific. Um, what will be the next free months bring me? Child, that's a reading. I can't do that in one, in one, one sentence. Thank you, Blue. Oh, you're welcome, my love. How do I get better connected to my spirit guides? That is not specific enough, love. Although I am hearing you need to do an altar, but you might need a reading. But for you in particular, please do an altar to who you think from your bloodline. I'm hearing matriarchal, not your father's bloodline. That's a whole different conversation. Somebody from your matriarchal love a bloodline is trying to get to you, but they need you to make an altar to them. At least two friends that I've outgrown have come up in my dreams. Should I reach out to either of them or leave it be? Leave it be. You're thinking about them because they're thinking about you. Will my work and financial situation, well, that one ran from him. I'm sorry. Um, will I, will I have to get a new car soon? Should have been got a new car, babe. You are living on borrowed time. Um, if you don't have a car, you needed a car a while ago. So either your current car ain't shit and you're waiting to get into an accident or have it break on you on the highway, or you've been needed a car and you've been dragging your feet, but they're saying it should have happened a while ago. Hey, Takara, I miss you, friend. 
Um, I'm hesitating going back to a job that I loved after a long hiatus. The relationship I built in that location dismantled after seeing them truly for who they were. Is it worth going back to the job or the relationship? Please clarify. Because that question felt like you weren't, you were asking about one question, but you kind of threw in a second one. You guys, because these are free readings, you have to be as concise as possible. If you have to make me work to help you, I'm going to just move on. Um, someone's clapping and saying thank you. That was on point. I'm happy. By the way, guys, I'm just answering what I'm getting. If you do a, a reading with me, you could have to remind me what I got. I don't memorize these readings. I'm literally a vessel. After I do these free readings, I'm going to pray all this shit away because it doesn't belong to me. One of the things, a lot of psychics and spiritual workers become very con conceited because they start to own the messages. I intentionally, as a Buddhist, y'all always forget that I'm Buddhist by, I'm a witch by lineage. I'm a reader by lineage. I had no choice that my Cuban daddy had a magical bloodline. But my actual religion of choice, my doctrine of choice is Buddhism. So I chant all the time. And Buddhists don't hold on to things that don't belong to us. Actually, we don't even hold on to the things that do belong to us, to be honest. Um, very scared about restarting graduate school for mental health. Will I be okay to pivot and move forward? Um, you're not ready, love. You could do it because you're high functioning as fuck. You're not ready, though. If there's an opportunity to defer, please do. And I'm sad because you know that. You're not ready. If you have to, please be super intentional about checks and balances. Because I'm hearing you have another three to six months of healing left in you. Um, what do I need to do to help child life transition to adulthood while allowing one to mature? You need to show by example. There are things that you want that you're not showing. A lot of times, and I'm hearing this from more than one person. A lot of there, There's a lot of parents in here. Um... Mm, there's a lot of parents in here and I'm hearing that there's some parents in here who are not asking about their parenting But they're about to get this whether they want it or not because my guys are nosy Your child doesn't learn from how you treat them. They also learn from how you treat yourself There's a lot of parents in here who want things for their kids that they haven't shown that they want for themselves Your kids learn by watching not by receiving So it's great that you want the best for them, but want the best for yourself Show them how to be the kind of adult that you want them to be. I'm hearing that for at least three of y'all three and one of y'all didn't even ask me a question. You're just watching and being nosy. You just got hit by a stray. General question. When you speak to someone else, but it feels like it resonates, can we apply it to ourselves? Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of times when I do these free readings, it's a community offering. It's a love offering. It's me saying thank you to everybody who signed up to my workshops. Thank you to everybody who, signed, who did one-on-one -on -one sessions with me. It's a way of me thanking you. But the fact that you're in the room means that you're co-creating um, with me. Um, and here's the thing that you guys might have noticed. A couple years ago, when I was doing these readings during the pandemic, I used my cards a lot. I've been doing so many readings that I need my cards less and less. That's how the psychic muscle works. The more you tap into your gift, the stronger it gets. So these community offerings are my way of thank you, thanking you guys as the general public, complete strangers who I don't know, for over the years helping me strengthen my gift in a way that I didn't even know was possible until I started working with y'all. Well, my, fans, my finances improved this year. Um, you're in for a rough three months, babe. If you have any improvement, it's probably not going to be until Q4. I'm hearing for you that you need to save a lot. And you need to down, downsize either your living quarters or your bills. So if you live alone, think about getting a roommate or moving in with someone. If you have a uh, cable, think about getting a fire stick. Like You need to worry about saving because I don't see... Yeah, I'm picking up a blockage fee with money. Somebody said, I felt like June was my pivot point. Same, friend. There was a pivot, but not in the right direction so far. Will it turn around for me? Ah, ah, ah. Your spirit guides are, are calling bullshit. So there's a thing called Shiva, the goddess of destruction and transformation. Destruction comes before transformation. So a lot of times we ask for the transformation, but we begrudge the first step. I'm hearing that things that were taken away from you were too small. God, think big, bitch. Sorry, my guys make me goofy sometimes. Will I become centered? Uh, will I become centered within my self love and singleness to be open to receive love I desire? Ooh, babe, you might want to take the class. You in particular? I have not said that to anybody yet. I'm not gonna say your name because it's, it's gonna be rebroadcast. To so the young lady who's asking those two questions, you need ongoing support. You don't have the answer to your question is you don't currently have the skills to do it on your own. Now, again. If you guys go to bluecentricshop.com backslash readings, bluecentricshop.com backslash readings, if you want to make me rich, you could do a bunch of one-on-one -on -one sessions with me and, and spend a lot of money, right? One-on-one -on -one sessions with me are $270 an hour. The class is 
less than double that for eight weeks, right? So I get less money from doing the class, but some of y'all need so much help. You could not afford me one-on-one -on -one for the amount of time that you need. That's why we do the class. I lose money doing the workshop, guys. Nobody ever wants me to talk about this, but I make more money talking to one-on-one -on -one clients. But I had so many people who had such deep-seated traumas and such deep-seated coaching needs that I recognized paying eight times 270 was too fucking much for a lot of y'all. That's why we have the class. And so the young lady who's asked me several questions and you have a guy, it's a woman. It might be a grandma. If your grandma's not alive, it's her. If she's alive, it's somebody who feels like an old matriarch. Um, she said you need a lot more help than what I can do with you in even one session or even one free live. So consider doing the class if you can afford it. If you can't afford it, then consider doing a 30 minute offering with me because that's the cheapest one on one I have, but you need a lot of help, love. And that's not me coming for you, by the way. It's not me coming for you. When I say people need a lot of help, it means they need fellowship, okay? Some of y'all don't just need my help, you need fellowship. And the class gives you both. Um, feeling so overwhelmed and stuck with my life, how can I truly move forward and get to the next stage of my life? Babe, you are haunted. You have been, and I'm gonna pause on you. I think, her name, I think your name is, I'm gonna call you Sophie for sure. I don't wanna say your full name because again, these are very personal answers. But to Sophie, you have been beating yourself up about what should have been. There are things you think you should have by now. Relationships that should have worked differently. You are being haunted by should. I'm pausing because I want you to receive that, Sophie. You're being haunted by, not, and I'm intentionally not saying your full name. You're being haunted by what should have been. You're going to have to release a lot before you can think about moving forward. There's a huge purge that has to happen before you can do the thing you just asked me about. It's, I have an old saying, if it's heavy, put it down. It's the most mundane fucking mantra I've ever created for myself. Girl, if it's heavy, put it down. If you were going grocery shopping and the bag was heavy, what would you do? You'd put it the fuck down. That's your answer. You have a lot of shit to put down before you and I can even talk about what you need to pick up. Someone said, could a person be psychologically abusive relationship with oneself? Absolutely. That's why... For those of you who don't know how the class works, it's eight sessions. The first four sessions are you learning how to mind your fucking business and how to work with your own self. Worry about yourself. The all first four sessions are all about dealing with the demon within, the hater within, the battle within. The second four sessions are about how to deal with interpersonal relationships and people around you. So yes, you can definitely be, you have to be in a psychologically abusive relationship with yourself to even be able to stomach a psychologically abusive relationship with somebody else. Um, someone said, thank you for being awesome. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you, my love. Oop, I'm hearing from my guys that I went over the time, but I'm going <sighs> to... My throat is closing up. Okay, they're getting mad at me because I'm oversharing. Okay, I'm getting a headache. I'm going to answer two more questions. Two more questions. Um, someone said, been waiting, wanting a reading, but feeling resistance to getting one. Should I take the resistance as a do not do? No, take the resistance as the, there's some uh, dark energy inside of you that is fighting to stay alive by you not showing yourself to the light. Things only grow in the dark, guys. And so a lot of times, before your ego dies, it throws a tantrum. I've had so many clients who have said, it took me a year to come to you. And um, by the end of the session, they're like, I regret I didn't come sooner. Do not harbor regrets. Just know that like the sooner you start, the sooner you get to finish and elevate to the next level. Thank you. I'm going to book a reading. Oh, that's cool. That's lovely. Somebody said, oh, hey, Amanda. I love you. By the way, Amanda, Carlos... Um, promise that you can make me Dominican breakfast. I'm just saying. So whenever y'all ready to do Dominican breakfast, I know it's your birthday. So I'm going to take you to brunch because it's your birthday. But I still want Dominican breakfast. How you doing? Um, and, oh, Vanessa, you love my face. Yes, the face is beat, honey. Thank you. Um, sorry if this sounds silly to ask. Will I give birth to another baby soon? I can't do medical questions. I will say get your womb checked, though. But I can't do medical questions. I've been asked to not do any more medical or um, legal questions. Last year, I had to tell a client that she had a tumor. She did, um, but I was advised that that could have gone left, so I got to protect myself, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I recently had two interviews. It went very well for both interviews. Will I get a call back soon? Um, one was being fake, so let's be real, and one sincerely liked you. So what I'm hearing is if you do get a call back, please double check that it's not the fake one. That's, that's, that's messy. 
Yeah, one of them was being fake. Yikes, they talked big shit about you afterwards. Okay, I don't want to plant a seed of doubt, but just know that one, one was very authentic and one was not everything that glitters is gold. Okay, so be mindful to double check and vet. Someone said, wow, thank you, Blue. That was so spot on. Thanks, guys. Again, I just work here. I am just telling y'all what I hear. So much when I of this me having this gift is so weird to me. Because I would not believe if I didn't do it. And so sometimes I'll give people very specific answers and then be like, wow, that was real, huh? Um, who, uh, thank you again. Thank you guys for all the things you... I have a lot of disappointment in my love life. Will I find love this year? No. You actually have some father and mother wounds. Yikes. Ooh. You should be... To the person who asked me, I can't tell what gender you are and I'm not going to get gender identity. You have some wounds that have made you have a deep-seated conviction about lack that would make you unsafe in a relationship right now. Worry about dealing with that because if you met your soulmate tomorrow, you would fuck it up. I've had a couple of clients who have come to me and said, well, I met my soulmate this year. And sometimes the answer is no, and thank God it's no, right? Because a lot of you pray for things, but you haven't created space to receive it. So God forbid you get that shit early, right? So, so the person who just asked, you don't have the capacity for the love that you're asking for, you need to be worried more about healing with yourself than finding a partner. Because right now, you would bleed all over somebody else. And I am so sorry. Blue, not the, the reader. Blue, the person, is sorry that I'm having to deliver such an ugly message. But I got like a, like a, a punch in my, in my crotch area. Funny enough, that's your root chakra. That I only feel when someone is um, in a space of deep, deep trauma and trying to be in a relationship. Ooh, chow. That made my stomach hurt. Um, ooh. Somebody in this room, for those of you who are in, I'm doing free readings. Somebody in this room needs to stop fucking on their ex. Because you know this person ain't shit. And you hold a lot of energy in, in your sex organs. And you know that you feel good when y'all get together. And then you're depressed after y'all stop fucking with each other. And your spirit guide is a spicy old woman. Black or brown. This is feel like a color person. Um, but your spirit guides are sick of your shit. <laughs> Jesus, this is loud. And I'm talking like them. So I'm yelling and I'm being real spicy. Because I'm imitating the energy of this person. So one of you in here has been fucking with somebody that you ain't got no business fucking on. And your grandma, your auntie, whoever she is, she's pissed. Leave that man alone. Ooh. Okay, sorry guys. This is why I was talking to a friend. I cannot date somebody who does not believe in my gift. Because there have been so many times. Shout out to Mike. Mike and I have been hanging out for weeks, like hard. I see Mike at least twice a week. I cannot tell you how many times I've been at a party where I'll have me a little drink and have to do a, an impromptu reading for a stranger and poor Mike has to pull me away like blue. So I could never be with somebody who does not believe in my gift because my gift is getting louder the older I get. Hey, shout out to Chi, shout out to Jessica. I love you guys. We're doing free energy readings. I just did for the first 30 minutes of this live. I was doing um, a retrospective about the, the most beautiful lessons that I've learned um, the first six months of the year. So if you guys are coming late, you can watch it on the playback about the, the the wonderful things that I learned the first six months of the year. Now we pivoted to free readings because um, the course starts next week and I wanted to gift everybody with some free readings before I go into like teacher mode. So I said, I recently had two interviews. I already saw that one. Um, she's, who makes better breakfast, Dominicans or Jamaicans? I'm gonna say Dominicans, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm, look, I'm Haitian and Cuban, right? So I ain't got a, a, a fight in this, but all my siblings are Dominican. So I grew up on Dominican breakfast. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, my old friend from eighth grade came back and we had a moment, a very sweet, innocent, um, hold on, a very sweet, innocent and doting man he, he was to me. Are we going to end together? Y'all need to fuck it out. I've been told not to answer that question because you're an overthinker. Y'all need to fuck it out. Somebody said, the guide is tired. Yeah, my spirit guides are yelling at me because I should have stopped 10 minutes ago, but I'm having a lot of fun. Um, months low-key since the baby... Oh, okay. Should I marry my current partner? No. Oh, I heard it. Ooh. Wow, I hate that. I hate that. I hate that answer. Um, to the person who asked if they should marry their, their, their current partner. So Blue, the emotional intelligence coach, is going to have to override my guides. My guide was yelling no. You have a patriarchal energy, a masculine energy around you who don't like the person you with. 
But I'm not sure if you should listen to them or not, right? Just know your guy don't like your partner. But I cannot tell you who to marry. If we ever do a one-on-one, -on -one, remind me of this so I can see if your guide is correct and you lying to yourself or is your guide a hater and just don't like your partner. Um, girl, call me to talk about my love life. You know I will, girl. Let's, let's chit-chat about that. I'm, I'm responding to a friend who has my number in real life. Um, make sure you sign up for OTS. Oh, thank you, Cheech. You guys, OTS is bomb. I promise you, I have so many friends who have watched me for years do ads for On Thy Shift. And they're like, oh, Blue's just trying to sell courses as a cash grab. And then I give them a session and they walk into the class. They're like, oh, shit, bitch, this is amazing. On Thy Shift of everything that I do, my EQ workshop is the thing that I'm the proudest of. When I die, it's what I want to be known for. It's that fucking impactful. Um, where my guides at? Your guys be talking to you all the time, love. So the Gemini who asked that, you don't be listening. Um, somebody said this face. Oh, thank you, love. Um, have I met my person soulmate already? Am I making the right choice to not date until I've healed more? You don't date until you've healed more. And by the way, you've met the person who asked that question. You actually have more than one potential. Um, you've met one potential, but you have another one that you haven't met yet. So let me see. Uh, somebody said, where's Mike? Mike, pull her off. She's tired. You guys are right. I need to come off. Okay, I'm going to do two more and then I'm going to stop. Two more. I swear I'm going to stop. This is so fun for me because I like being of service. Um, thank you. I just got my fibroids removed two weeks ago. So yes, I'm healing my womb. Okay, good. Because I picked up so much around your womb and I was trying not to do anything medical, but I really felt it around your womb. So I'm happy that you did that. You confirmed that. Thank you for confirmation, love. Anything medical, I try not to touch, but I really felt that. Um, I Is a reading set in stone, I wonder? No, a reading is not set in stone. A reading is I'm looking at current energies and telling you what's most probable to happen. And if you like what you hear, keep doing it. And if you don't, now you have an opportunity to course correct and to pivot. I do not take away free will. The point of a, of a reading is to find out what's there and what's probably coming. But you're completely empowered at any point to course correct. There have been some really fucked up things that I picked up for myself in readings that I 100% course corrected. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to come off now, but I just want to thank everybody who joined this live. I love y'all to pieces for those who showed up for the reading part, but missed the, the lesson at the beginning. Please watch the lesson at the beginning because I'm hearing very loudly that a lot of the people who came late needed that first part, which is why I keep this up. For those who wonder where my lives go, my lives only stay up on my page on Instagram for a couple hours for the people who immediately want to rewatch it. Then they live permanently on my YouTube, okay? So for those who were like, Blue, I was trying to watch your live, where, where did it go? If you ever try to watch one of my lives and it's not on my Instagram, that's because it's moved over to my YouTube, okay? All right, I love you guys to pieces. I gotta go. Um, I'm hungry, so I'm gonna go eat me something. Um, and shout out to Dee for always beating my face and having me look cute. I um, I did something really fun and cool yesterday. I, I can't share it yet, but I'm looking forward to sharing it with you in the upcoming week or two. And again, if you want to join the course, by the way, these lives are a very watered down version of how much fun we have in the workshop. We sit down on Zoom every Wednesday. So you can be anywhere in the world. You guys know I'm always bragging about my international clientele or whatever because she's international, she's global. But no, we sit down for two hours every Wednesday and we sit and we go through the work. We talk about shadow work. We talk about ego deaths. We talk about uh, courageous conversations, how to have them and when not to have them, when to disengage, when they go left. We talk about assets and liabilities, which relationships to invest in, which relationships not to invest in. We talk about internal dialogue. We talk about relationship blockages. We talk about so much shit, but because we're all in our pajamas drinking our favorite libation, no more than one drink, and we're key keying, it almost feels like you're having group therapy with a bunch of strangers who slowly but surely feel like family. And it never fails by the eighth class, the same people who were like blue, I can't believe it's eight weeks on, on week one are now crying and sad that it's over on week eight. It never fails. It never fails, okay? And here's why it's so addictive. And this is why I also do alumni classes. We are not used to being in a room full of people who are all deciding to invest in themselves. We are told it is selfish to invest in ourselves. We are told that it's egotistical to put you first. Gotta put me first, Lucius, right? So when you're in a room of 10, 20, 30 people who all just wanna fucking do better, 
There's a, an energy in that room that I alone cannot re replicate. You come for me, but you stay for the fellowship and the shadow work. And so there are a lot of people who've met their best friends in the class. There are a lot of people who've taken the class and they've been like, damn blue. I didn't realize that that thing that I did was limiting until I saw somebody else complaining about it. So for anybody who's coming late to this live, I'm going to save this live, but I need you to know the first half of this live is me sharing some free game with you. And the second half of the live is a bunch of strangers asking me questions and me answering them as a psychic. If you've never seen a psychic or a clear um, cognizant or clear sentient do her, her, her bidding, part of me doing these free game, free questions is because I want y'all to de demystify and destigmatize energy work. We're not Satanists. We're not doing of the devil. God was in the room the entire time I was answering these questions, right? God was in the room. So I want you guys to stop demonizing things that come from our ancestral DNA. Also, I'm hearing a final message. For a couple people in here, the creatives, raise your rates. There are some creatives who either just walked in the room or who have been in here the entire time. I'm hearing it's a melange, it's a mix. Raise your fucking rates. There are people in here who are not charging enough out of guilt or out of people pleasing. Raise your fucking rates. The price of admission has gone up, both literally and figuratively speaking. I'm going to repeat it one more time. Raise your rates, guys. How much does it cost to have access to you as a person? How much does it cost to have access to your artistry? Whatever the fuck that is, add sales tax, okay? I'm hearing that very loudly, which makes me feel like a bunch of creators must, must have just walked in. Male and female, gay and straight. Also, it's a lot of y'all in here. It's a very interesting cross-section. All right, and for those of you who came late, I'm gonna save this for a couple of hours on here. And if it's not on here, that means it's, I moved it to my Blue Centric YouTube page. I love y'all to bits. This was so fucking fun. And now I'm about to get back to work because I have a bunch of admin work to do. And y'all know I respect admin. I right, love y'all. Bye.